Hello and welcome to the Synergia People Podcast 2023. My name is Alejandro José Amunda. My father's from Buenos Aires. José for his father, but also for the dancer José Limón, with whom my mom studied and danced uh, for a brief period in the 60s. And Amunda is my name. And it means something like of the world rather than from a particular place in the world. I take great pleasure in being around and dipping into everything. Sometimes it's a challenge that I don't actually know a lot about many things. I know a lot, a little about a lot of things. And I run up more and more lately on the limits of that. My life has danced very much with as many facets of the arts as, as I can touch. And I have only become more and more convinced that anything can be art. Anything at all. And really everything can. And it's just a certain amount of quality of attention, perhaps intention, and an eye towards beauty and a heart also towards beauty. So what brought you here to Synergia Ranch, where you have been the last five years? Little over, yeah. Quite unintended. I was looking for a place <laughs> like this, but uh, I'll, the short story, perhaps, is that I was working on a short film in North Carolina that I'd co-written. I was talking to my mom. She said she Maybe I wanted to visit Santa Fe for the holidays. She had a feeling I was born here. And we left when I was four and a half. I did want to visit. I was hoping it would spark memories. I didn't really have money or a plan. I just knew generally what I didn't want to be doing with my life. And so I was loosely running away from that, loosely towards whatever else there might be. And so we came here and I didn't discover any new memories as I would have hoped. However... Our second to last day, we met with an artist who dated one of my mom's dance students in the 70s at Hampshire College. So when I met this artist, I was very interested by work he was doing for the Santa Fe Institute's Interplanetary Festival. I took a return plane ticket to England. I was looking for a place like this ranch community with its ethos that I couldn't quite find. I ended up moving to Santa Fe without money or plan except to work with this artist on this project. Because I, we were corresponding via email, and I, I realized I had to experience it to actually right. write for it. And our medical advisor for the project was friends with folks here. Because okay. it had flashing lights, it could have caused epilepsy. And he recommended I could get a room here. And I actually denied it once because I didn't have a car. And the artist and I knew 20 minutes outside of town, it'd be really hard to be taxied in to work on this project, but I ended up really needing a place to stay. So I came here for a week, which became a month, became three, became six, and to my good fortune, John and I got on very well and everyone else for good measure. How would you describe the ranch? How would you describe what you found here to make you stay? The first night, I, I knelt down next to my bed And I'd set up some sort of loose-ish, alter-ish thing, maybe, I don't recall for sure. And I just do recall saying, I can do real magic here. I had just an immediate sense that things were happening, people were interesting. One is there's a fundamental sense of play, I find. I can make a strange face, I can propose an odd idea, and people respond and, and meet it. And I've I've discovered, as I've gone on in life, that I actually... Feeling safe to play is what I look for in a place. I have, I've, I've noticed now all these little ways that I test new friends or new environments to see how odd can I feel comfortable to be. Just because to me, being alive is the thinnest line away from surreal at any moment <laughs> and often yeah. funny too. And it seems to be I have this thing of poking just because I can at the veils. So there's the play here, there's the actual ongoing sense in evolution. I remember passing Freddy at a party and hearing him and seeing his smiling face saying, no one actually knows the potential of the human brain. And the idea of being in a place where that idea is very exciting and... Allowed to have. <laughs> yes, and there's an interest in pursuing them. I and people have worked for decades 
with their bodies, with their brains, with their capacities to work with other people. And that's really the last part. The word synergy is very strongly in my vocabulary now, amongst many other words I've mm. found here. To be alive on planet Earth right now is to not have an easy time working with people. And it's amazing that humans have made it this far. Mm. All of these problems are from not miscommunications and projections and fears, woundings, all that business. But I am thoroughly convinced that the shift from, as as it's called, the energy empire, the en- just a, a civilizations that are powered by burning things to propel forward, figuratively yeah. or literally, versus the alchemy that actually comes from when you synergize and then actually it's less energy for more outcome and outcomes that you couldn't imagine emerge. Yeah. It, it's powerful, it's real, it's important. So what kind of magic has happened to you in these five years? Something I can't describe, but I can feel and other people observe is a certain kind of grounding. It's a very different relationship to being in space, to approaching projects, to making things happen. I'm still working on habits, but the shifts in sort of the total system managerial kind of view, whether it's myself as an individual organism or as part of ranch or planet, uh, that's just in my attention in a very strong and different way. Also, capacities to ride out change. I had a lot of change early in life, and it prepared me, I think, rather uniquely for being here. A different house every year, a different school every year or two, different countries, cultures. But things change so swiftly here, and Heraclitus is the name of the ship, who says all change is the only constant. It's program. It's sorry. It's the program here. Yeah, yeah. It it is. It's in the veins, the bones, the land, the air. It's and so choosing to meet that and become more comfortable, primarily by laughing and releasing attachments, recognizing how, in a way, little. I don't mean this nihilistically, but like how little really matters. How much you can actually release and do it a different way. I think about this with writing, actually, as I'm working on a science fiction project with Jade. This. Like how how little character description and maximum evocation can I get away with? Because it's rarely actually essential that a character is tall and thin and and whatever color skin, unless that's what your story is about per right. se. Often they could just be almost anything. What has your time here done with you? Do you recognize any kind of change in yourself? Oh, in I this? would that I had. The journals I've been advised to keep, we could I could lay it out in a long story at another time. I find it in a way hard to imagine or remember. Like I know I have senses and images and memories of who I was before being here, but it would be very hard for me to actually imagine who and how I'd be. It's just it's like complete holistic, total system improve. I, I was going to say improvements, maybe evolutions. As close to, <laughs> it's in a way one of the more religious senses in my life. Like I've been saved. Like there was something around just being thoroughly stressed and far stretching and not at all grounded and focused. To you know, th- thanks to an incredible environment that has given a lot of space for mistake and for accident and, and wild endeavors. I feel like a garden that has actually grown instead of just being scraggly and growing here and there. But the, the whole thing is kind of buzzing. There's some flowers. Yeah. The ecosystem is actually respecting itself and functioning more smoothly. What role played Johnny Allen in all of this? Maybe we need to say that Johnny Allen is, how can we say, one of the founders here, the big leader from what I hear from all the others. Is he kind of mentor to you or because you mentioned a couple of times in our conversation now, you mentioned his name, you were well, referring to him. At least once a day, if not more. Certainly one of the human beings I love most and who has been an incredibly generous um, friend, teacher, fellow human being, fellow explorer, dancer, poet, um, I mean, we, we met over a chessboard and he destroyed me 
but he, and he but it was the night before I moved here and he was already very welcoming with bright eyes and it turns out that he's best friends with the person from whom the artist that I connected with was renting studio space for good measure really settled here we we spend more and more time together until now it's several hours a day sometimes more and we play go and watch things and joke and converse and walk and he'll make jokes and observations that I would ne- I've never heard anywhere outside my own head kind of a thing so there's a strong resonance there but For also For example um I the, the immediate thing that comes to my mind is some of the puns and rhymes that he'll make but I I wouldn't be able to think of a s- yes, specific fine, one right now I wish he he's he's in a way casually relentless <laughs> and another way to describe this maybe is incremental advances like it's with his with his weeding you know we it's hard to get you have to add five to ten minutes to get anywhere because he's going to stop and prune or weed or just do something to improve the environment on the way wherever we go so even with me now like i'll come in in the morning we'll see each other and he'll have an observation about for, based on my outfit that is pretty astute to what i have in my internal life or what kind of character i'm feeling like that day when i'm da- i i'm sometimes afraid to dance in the same rooms and because i know he's going to see something that i don't necessarily want to deal with right now but also he will and he it isn't from any kind of like malicious breakdown place it is always from my experience of him is 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 a genuinely sensitive person who has managed to keep that fire alive in spite of great changes since 1929 on the planet and great dangers and has a genuine interest in other people really getting through their business and evolving and he will he can see it he will offer it and I, I try to be willing to receive. Yeah. So you were just mentioning in your answer, uh, depending on which character I want to be today. Mm. Why don't you want to be simply you, yourself? One of the ideas that I encountered here, which Johnny synergized from someone else, has to do with the letter I, as in I want to have cake, I want to whatever. There are many I's within a single person. There, It takes a lot to create the unified something that can then actually engage with the planet and the cosmos. So I'm not there yet with the unified, and I would like to get there. In Johnny's schema, it's like the ninth dimension. The first three are space, next three are time, and then you get to having an essence after all that. Human beings are are full of selves and harmonies and possibilities and and interests and there's a, a a bubbling out of creative expressiveness in me that doesn't even like to you know write the same when I'm making Johnny's schedule in the morning I don't even write it the same way two days in a row it's almost compulsive at this point. So it's not like I'm there in my room saying, I want to look like such a thing today, but a person, whatever reasons, a person wakes up and they find themselves assembling a certain atmosphere of being with their outfit, or at least I do, but it's not any kind of intentional thing, but he'll notice you're more intellectual today. You're more wanting to be a cowboy today and so on. So okay. I feel like I do have a strong and growing stronger sense of that of that me rather than just a, a diversity of characters but that me seems to be someone who likes to be many people <laughs> to talk in all sorts of ways and i mean part of why i got into acting to begin with was the actual idea of just i felt like i could understand other people better yeah. if i tried to be them yeah and empathy is a learned skill, as I've learned, but, again, can't work with other people. How would you define your place, your space here? I will use a phrase borrowed from our ranch manager to describe herself in the past, which was a free radical. And it's sort of that person who's around in the background, a bit like a stage manager is another analogy given to me recently of how I run my life, where... 
observing what needs to happen and dipping in like a hummingbird to help in the different spots. I do have a specific point of management, which is called synesthesia, which is the food for the dinners, the food for certain people eating out of the community kitchen, the cooking schedule and general ambiance and social cohesion. But otherwise, I've lived in many different rooms and contributed to many different facets of what's happening here. But it has sort of settled into I'm mainly synesthesia, delivering produce and working with John and then generally around. So is this your place here? Yeah. Are you going to stay longer? Yes. Yeah, I mean, it took me a little while to sort of feel safe and in a, that it was a home just in the sense of like having been moving around a lot being in a place with a lot of change and not a lot of resources myself it was just i couldn't i couldn't relax in a certain way and also it's so bright i don't know how people made it for hundreds or more years without sunglasses here i now have prescription tinted glasses because i just i can't handle it but it's gorgeous so yes and oddly the first Four times I left the state after I moved here, I was ill, three of them, like strongly until I got back. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's a it's a powerful place to be and to meet a diversity of interesting explorers of human beings and and then also adventure into the world while it's still there. You were mentioning in earlier conversations that you ha do have some health issues. Mm. Does this overall, uh, how shall I say, the overall atmosphere here, which seems to be quite pleasing to you, mm. does this help you and your... <laughs> <laughs> Woo. Amazing. <laughs> Why are you laughing like this? <sighs> yes and no. Um the the health condition that you mentioned was that I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease almost 10 years ago which had from my own money because I don't have much family history or the like it had a lot to do with internalization of stress fear and not communicating with people who I really needed to a partner friends parents so on and so I had to do with how I was working with that stress and all that so since being here especially with Johnny who observes the main danger in life if you actually see any truth is dying of laughter but he survived it twice so he's pretty good but as I point out it could still happen if he see it yeah. You can always see something new. So learning how to laugh and being in this, this crucible hyper environment where things change a lot, whether they mean to or not, choosing to relax into that has given me the chance to heal in certain ways and given me a certain baseline of support where I can invest in my healing in certain ways. And on the other hand, things like a lot of change still can create a lot of stress. And when they pile on from different facets of life, as I also have other projects, of course, off ranch, um, that can create its own challenges. Yeah. And that's why I was laughing. The thing that helps is also the thing that heals. But St. Augustine observed that and before and since. Last thing, Alessandro, five words to describe the place here. Yeah, I'm going to add two words to the last line of one of Johnny's poems. And so the line is, this is the ever-living wild. Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for listening and please stay tuned for the next episode of the Synergia People Podcast 2023.